part two of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Mayhem Turtle Van. This is the newest one that you can pick up in the stores. I'm pretty sure still you can get it. I know at least you can get a target. But anyway. Uh, this was this. Okay, before we get into the bad stuff. Kind of kind of aggravated the project, but we're going to keep going. But right here. If you know about the van, there's a plastic pizza shooter that's blue. I'll put that in the first the first video I did about this. I'll put in the description the breakdown of it. Uh, since then, I broke it down some more, and now I'm making room for a subfloor, so to speak. I have to dremel down these pieces that are recessed up that the blue pizza shooter would slide on when you hit the top of the van where a pizza is and it would kick out the side door and it would come out. You can put a figure inside the makeshift seat or makeshift pizza shooter and then it shoots plastic pizzas. I wanted to do away with all that. I have other plans for inside the van and also we'll get to that later too as well. But right now, like I said, I'm just making room for a subfloor so the subfloor uh, fits smooth as possible inside this van so what I can put into the actual floor. So I did some sanding and stuff and uh, appreciate you guys watching. I'll pop in and out. But part two of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Mayhem Van. Rebuild, unbuild, restore, complete paint, complete whatever you want to call it. Okay, so after the sanding and cleaning up and wiping it down, here's the subfloor I'm going to use. Wasn't really, I knew this was probably going to be a little tedious. I've done subfloors in houses. I moved walls, broke, tore down walls, replaced walls, um, ran electric and all this. I'm not trying to say I'm Mr. Carpenter here. I'm not that, but I'm way more familiar with housing stuff building than I am with smaller scale model stuff building. So, did the best I could. Didn't fit it in there exactly perfect, like centimeter by centimeter, but it turned out pretty well. This is uh, the white foam board you can get from anywhere. Actually, my daughter gave me this piece of foam board. Uh, you can get it from Walmart, Hobby Lobby, uh, Michaels, Joann's. It's the typical one. It's about an eighth, a little more than an eighth inch thick, not so much a quarter inch, but it actually turned out to be perfect for what I'm doing here. Here it is complete it's inside the van and I must say it just see those two recess parts right there it worked out almost perfect it almost like way I was surprised I was completely surprised I wasn't thinking it was gonna be this smooth I thought I was gonna to have to go through all kinds of things to figure out what I was gonna do by pouring resin or whatever I was gonna do I, I don't know but I'm just so happy that actually this part was a breeze so now Here's the sub, here's the actual floor from Coho Homes. This is a wallpaper, stainless steel type wallpaper look. And it's a little thinner than I wanted it to be, but it was $8 on Amazon. So what I'm doing now, and I honestly, I kind of did it backwards. Uh, I cut that part out where I actually did it actual back, 
I actually cut it out backwards. So luckily this rolls like 50 foot or whatever it is. I don't know, but for eight bucks you can't beat it. So this was this was a little of a, kind of a pain, but eh, it worked out. Well, two tries after trying to cut, cut this thing out because when I laid it down as my template, I wasn't thinking that it had to be opposite to lay down and stick to the actual surface. So I cut it out backwards. But after two tries, I finally achieved what I was going for. And I, I always try to make it as close as possible, make it as perfect as possible. You really don't have to because you're not gonna see most of it anyway. Most of it's gonna be covered up by the body and everything else inside the, what's going in the van. But still, I want it as perfect as possible. Here I'm just taking some hot glue and just securing the subfloor so it doesn't move on me later. I just thought, I, don't, I didn't think I had to use super glue. I think hot glue was good enough. And replacing a little piece here that I broke off in the process of making my template. So here it is right here. This is, the, this is where it all comes down to what it's gonna look like or what's gonna happen. It's pretty smooth looking, pretty good stuff. I wish it was a little more thicker and I wish it was a little more stickier. Now, could I get it off after putting it on here? No, I'd tear the template, all the pieces, and my subfloor to pieces to get it apart. But what I'm looking for is a reflective, shiny base for the lights. I want it to look like futuristic, or maybe like, you know, like Donatello would have a van inside the van if he was using it as a moving scientific lab if he needed to use it that way, or some kind of moving hazardous waste van or something whatever you know some i don't know some basically a ooze cylinder is going to be in there so this this turned out pretty good it's it's i think i'm looking at it now and thinking man it's not it's not good enough but after i think i put everything on top of it i think it'd be okay So I got Mr. Goo gone. I tell you, this stuff is really good. Or these these stickers are really cheap. I put this on there and waited 15 minutes. It peeled off like, like a wet napkin. I couldn't believe it. I wasn't really happy about these stickers. I think we could I I got another scheme that I wanted to go on. Or even order possibly order stickers off online, put my own stickers on there. But at the same time, I'm kind of going with it. Just the paint scheme and everything else. I'm not 100% sure yet. Have a good idea. Talk to my son and daughter about it. But here's the lights I got from Walmart. Real just inexpensive 495 LED lights. And these things are bright. Couldn't believe it. And it's great because if you turn them to the left, they turn off. Turn them to the right, they turn on. You can put it in your on your shelf. Just And it comes with a remote. I don't have to run no wires. I don't have to do any soldering. It's great. It's perfect. Okay, here's where the fun started to slow down. And I know there's always times with projects you have to back up and do some things here and there. Here's where I told myself I wasn't gonna buy Rust-Oleum and I did. I thought it was because it had an old can. Don't use Rust-Oleum primer on any model car kit. But before that, right here, see that? That's actually in the sculpt. That's not the primer. 
primer worked. A little kind of hard to deal with. Got tacky. So after several attempts, I had to come back down, sand that piece down. And that little scratch right there, and the scratches on the side of the door, or the back of the trunk right there, tremendous buildup, tremendous buildup. I had to go over and over and over again that I did not show you on camera because it was all day of going back and forth out in the backyard trying to fix that little spot that I had to sand down. But here's the final coat and the final, well, no, this isn't. This is me trying to rebuild. Okay, so it's not the final coat. That's coming up next. This is my frustration, as you could probably hear in my voice, that I'm thinking, man, this is just, I'm going to throw this thing away. I just don't know. I, I should have went with Tamiya. Tamiya primer. My son gave me some Citadel primer that worked perfect. The, with something this big, it would take so long to get a full solid coverage with the airbrush, at least in my opinion. I'm using a 5.0 needle or 0 0.5, whatever you guys call it, needle, the biggest one you can get in the airbrush and still it took time and layer after layer and then I had to sand it then layer maybe I was going maybe too deep with it maybe I thought to myself I don't need to go this deep because it's going to be a diorama scene with Donatello being the focus point of the project but I still want it to be smooth I still want it to be clean I still want it to be shiny and I still want it to look as best as I can possibly get it because every custom thing that you do you want the next one to be a little better than one you did so right here is my son came down again with some of this war paint primer, never used it. He knows I've been having primer issues, didn't know, you know, over and over and over again. This stuff, I'm switching from Vallejo primer to that war, war army paint primer. Um, it's really smooth, really smooth. You can shoot it out of the gun without cutting it with any kind of distilled or thinners or anything like that or reducers. But I did find for me, even run the, the the bigger needle i i found that i still had to give it like maybe 50 percent 15 percent water to whatever ratio you're using to make it i i, I found a little bit it, it shot a little dry for me um maybe some people would be fine but he he used it right out of his uh gun he does more along along the lines of miniatures i like to paint this sh shoot a little more wet than that it, it it's less dry tipping and it's more it's just better for me i like it come out a little more wet so i dilute it with something but here's where i i tried it out halfway back not even halfway back that's the key i think with this primer for me i know every other airbrush every airbrush gun's different this is only a master's uh, 39 something whatever it's a 40 dollars airbrush so halfway back it it it, it shot perfect for me um so yeah, I just hit the chairs again again, for another another spot here. I'm cleaning up the side. I'm cleaning everything up. I'm giving everything a once over, looking at it, making sure it's smooth. And then we're going to move on to the chairs. Now, speaking of chairs, here's where, oh man, this is where I, I started. Okay, it's really starting to downward spir spiral here. Uh, I didn't show you. I just went in with a the Vallejo white primer. Uh, did didn't show you the whole process to bore you with just primer in it. So right here is where it all falls apart. Here's where I'm using a very inexpensive Kraft Smart Paint. It's the color I wanted it to be. And I, I, I've tried, I put folk art, I put deco art through an airbrush, no problem. This stuff, I probably should have treated it the same, but I decided here to try to think that I knew what I was doing when I guess I didn't know what I was doing to the point of using this type of particular paint. I, I watered it down way too much, I think, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I used some Easy Flow, I used some Reducer, I used some Distilled Water. I think I over -dil diluted the actual paint. So it wasn't the product, it was actually the user that messed this up, but still, the aggravation was there. 
actually I just didn't prep it properly for the actual airbrushing process. I'm going to revisit the color, but just now that I have everything primed, I think it'd be much easier and I'm not going to thin it, thin it out as much. Fast forward to the next day, they turned out perfect. Nice and smooth, I said to myself, man, look how smooth that paint job is. With that, that inexpensive craft paint. I thought to myself, man, what am I spending all this money for? Look at this, look how smooth that is. Look at the imperfection there on the left-hand side in the middle of the seat, didn't realize that yet. So I said to myself, I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna make, I'm gonna, everything that's protruding on the seat, I'm gonna paint black. Got my, got my extra eyeballs on. I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna take my time and I'm gonna go through all these pieces that are sticking out on the chair and paint them black, which you probably wouldn't see them anyway in the van. Maybe the top portion, I don't know. So I didn't realize it until my finger hit the top of the chair here. I think you'll see it here in a minute. But before I did that, I was gonna take the time to mask all this off because I didn't think my lines were straight enough. I wanted my lines to be crisp, crisp, clean, factory straight. And I said, well, that's gonna take me a few hours to mask this thing up and then airbrush the spots I want black, black. And then I think here, I should be coming up here soon. We should be here, we should, the, the ship must sink here soon. So you didn't, I didn't see it here, but my finger had chipped the top. Here's where I'm gonna wipe some of this off. I thought, you know what, I'm gonna mask this thing up. And then I said to myself, no, I'm not gonna mask it up. And then my finger hit this top of the chair. This is what happened. So I don't think I was recording at the time because I was getting ready to mask, the, mask it up. So I didn't wanna sit here and have a five hour masking process on the chair. But look at this, it peels right off. I mean, could then the first thing I thought was, what about the van? All this time I took to prep the van. So luckily I got so many coats of primer on the van. Well, not, not so many where it, you lose the sculpt, but look at this, just peels off. And I know if you come to the channel and you're, you're a car builder and I get it, I did not rough the surface up. But after I did this, I roughed the surface up. I did some light sanding and I took the sandpaper and I roughed the surface up with some small 350 grit or something like that, whatever it was. And then, then I primered it again with Rust-Oleum, Citadel, and then I went over it with some Vallejo primer. Now they're bright as they can be, you'll see here in a minute. There's the chairs in the background. Here's how smooth everything turned out. So the time and the patience that sometimes I'm not patient with, there's a side right there where the hole was and it's smooth. See, I got a close up here, real smooth. So I think now the fun starts, I hope. Now the, now the paint, paint scheme, not 100% sure. I think I'm gonna add some black in there. I know the turtle van's green and yellow, but I wanna make this a little different not completely horribly different or it stands out different but just something different but we'll see i don't know i think i'm gonna go we'll find out anyway thank you guys for watching i try to cut this down as much as i could and uh till the next one we'll see you this is part two of the teenage mutant ninja turtle mayhem van the next one should be more informative of what's going on and we should probably see some colors. I'll see you guys on the next one.